think everybody can, so I think we're just going to stop. I'm going to mostly be live programming today, so this projection was kind of on a bummer. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to start by introducing myself, by actually typing my name and things like that. I mean, you're going to have to tell me if you can read this. I try to kind of shrink my window so you can actually see the whole screen. I don't think I'm succeeding, but right. uh, some of you in the back might have to stand up a bit. <laughs> I'll try to keep my code at the top of the screen as much as possible. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to sit for most of this because I don't have a lectern to stand behind and, and talk at you while I'm coding. So, if you can't see me, just try and focus on my voice. Right, hello, my name is Spoodin Stokka. Can you read that? Excellent. In the back too? Yes. Right. And I am from Norway. In fact, from Oslo, Norway, where I work at a company called Steria, which is a French company. Um, and my Twitter handle is Spoodin TV. I don't have a um, um, video blog or anything yet. Some people ask me that. Um, and today we are going to have a look at something called back phone. Right, can you still read that? That far down. How far can we get? <coughs> can you see that in the back? 16. Barely. Okay. We're going to try and go with that. Do, should I maybe uh, increase the font size? We good? Okay. That is great. Okay, uh, so as you may have noticed already, uh, I don't have any slides, we're just going to be writing code today. But I'm going to talk a bit about, uh, about backbone before we start. So, uh, no pretty slides, no funny pictures, nothing. I'm just kidding, I have a fantastic time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, enjoy that one if you can, if you can actually see it, I can't. Right. So, uh, this is my browser. Um, I'm going to have to use a bit of, uh, of the JavaScript console in Chrome. And I have not figured out how to increase the font size here. So I'm going to have to just try and tell you what I, I'm seeing here. Anyway. First of all, uh, Backbone is today's subject, and uh, Backbone is an MVC framework for JavaScript. First of all, I'm, I'm going to have to start just by engaging the audience a bit here. Uh, how many of you actually know JavaScript? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the audience is kind of frightening in the way here yesterday, telling me that you're, you're a Mr. Java developer, so I'm, I'm, had invited some JavaScript people just to learn about this. I was terrified we learned nothing about this. So in fact, I'm going to be using CoffeeScript today, just to save myself some typing. And I'm, try I'm going to try and, and be as gentle on you as possible. How many know CoffeeScript by the way? A lot of you are. <laughs> so um, I'm going to try to keep my CoffeeScript as close to JavaScript as possible. I just, I just can't really be bothered to write <coughs> Classes in, in JavaScript style today. It takes way too much time. So, uh, Backbone is actually written by the same person who wrote CoffeeScript, Jeremy Ashkenaz. And um, as I mentioned, it's an MVC framework, and I'm going to try and explain what that means. Uh, first of all, it's not really an MVC framework. MVC means Model View Controller, and it's something that came from uh, small talk and things like that back in the day, which um, is implies uh, a kind of separation of concerns where um, you model your data, uh, what comes from the database, uh, in a, a model class. And then you have um, a view class, uh, which is not really aware of the model, which kind of presents the user interface to just the view. And then there's a controller, which uh, there's a huge debate about what the controller really is. But normally, in things like Spring MVC, uh, it's uh, 
kind of what we lose the, the modern language here together. And in Blackbird, there's no, really no control of and we don't normally need one. So Blackbird's kind of, kind of more like an NB framework. Um, and it's completely client stack. It lives in the browser. It's meant to run only in the browser. So the model isn't actually uh, just a kind of thin layer of, uh, above your database or, or hibernates findings and something like that. It's just uh, it's basically just a JSON document uh, with the, with the events and, and triggers you can listen and um, go into more detail about that as, as we start. Well, I thought, because uh, RSE frameworks uh, on the browser are really popular these days, so I thought I'd just try and, and tell you why you should use Backbone uh, instead of all the others, and why you shouldn't. Because uh, there are nice things about Backbone, and there are things that are, are not nicer with other frameworks. It's really a matter of taste. And, first of all, what's, what's good about Backbone is it's very, very lightweight. Um, it only depends on, on underscore, which is another library that uh, Jeremy Nishkin has wrote, which is um, kind of simplified functional programming for JavaScript. We're going to, we're going to be looking at which uh, where you get a, a brief glimpse of it. And it, underscore is very small, and backend is very small. And the philosophy behind it is that it's very pluggable. It doesn't have opinions about how, how you should be doing things. So, um, basically, it just does the model part and it does the view part in the likeliest way possible. Um, so you can kind of plug in your own templating libraries, uh, whichever ones you, you come to like. And you can plug in your, your database backend and stuff and everything. Roll it your own, your own way, basically. Which brings us to the bad part of Backpack, which is that it is very lightweight, it is very unopinionated. So you tend to have to write a little more code in Backpack than you would in, in, in other MEC frameworks on, on the browser. Most of the others come with, uh, with templating languages, languages that automatic data binding them and rendering of these, uh, which saves you a lot of time going. But you have to like the particular framework. And if you find one that you like, definitely go ahead and, and throw Backbone away and, and use that. Or you can build your own framework on top of Backbone if you like. The thing is, Backbone is very lightweight. So I'm kind of thinking it's a good place to start. And let's start. Um, so I thought that I would write a Twitter client for you today, uh, just to show you um, the basics of Backbone. A, tw a Twitter client isn't necessarily the, the best example of all that Backbone can do, but it's easy to relate to, and it it's uses all of the most basic features. So let's see if we, we can do that. So the rules of live coding is that if I screw something up and you spot what I'm doing wrong, you tell me. This is a group exercise. I don't write perfectly by the code. I'm very close, but not perfect. So you have to help me out, okay? Um, so here's my Emacs, by the way. And I have a skeleton kind of. I've, I've cheated a bit, I have to admit. This is what I have in my, my app directory right now. First of all, uh, I am running the server part, which I'm not going to live code for you today, um, as the node application. So <coughs> here's the node package, the JSON file, which just lists dependencies for the node base. And here's the actual application. It's <coughs> coffee script. It's not meant to be a very readable coffee script. But I'm going to try and, and tell you what it does so you know what we, we're going to be looking at on, on the client. Um, I use uh, Express as a lightweight web framework. 
in this case, just basically serving the static index file, which loads our JavaScript, so there's no trickery on, on the server side. That's not even uh, an HTML template, in fact. And a socket.io. Does anyone, does anyone <coughs> know what that is? Wondering about if um, Socket IO is um, is um, kind of a, um, a web socket layer. Um, so it, it uses web sockets. It uses long coding or, or other techniques if web sockets aren't available to communicate between the client and the server uh, without having to do AJAX. So you can push things to the client. And it, it works, um, it's event based. So, so the server can, can send events to the, the client, which the client can listen to, and vice versa. So, it's a great way of communicating uh, between the, the client's application and the server. Right. And I'm using uh, a little package called No Twitter to do my uh, Twitter API clicks on the, on the server. There's a uh, lot of implementation for that, and the end result is that whenever a new tweet arrives, um, this, by the way, is hard coded to one Twitter account. There's no login. I've cheated a bit there, um, and I've configured it here. I'm not going to show you my secret piece for that. So. Um, the idea then is that using Socket.io, when there's a new tweet, we send a tweet event, event to the client. And tweets might get deleted, in which case we send a delete event to the client telling it to remove that tweet. And there's another event called friends, which, uh, which the Twitter API sends whether you like it or not, and we're just going to ignore that. It's basically uh, your friend list. Um, and that is the server. I also uh, made it so that uh, the server caches tweets so that whenever a client connects, we don't have to ask Twitter each time to, uh, to tell us, uh, to give us a backlog. backlog. <coughs> so whenever a new client connects, it's going to get fed 20 tweets immediately. Just so you know that there's no special magic happening there. Right, um, let's see. That, I think, concludes the server side. I have a um, web folder here, which is the static um, HTML content, which includes the CSS file, because I'm not going to bore you with the writing CSS line on stage. There's an index file, which we are going to have to look at. This is just boilerplate um, so far. It's an HTML document. Uh, I include socket IO. I use uh, require.js, which is a really cool um, dependency management system uh, on the client side to, to load my dependencies. And let's see about those dependencies. Yeah. There's Backbone. There's the CoffeeScript loader for require.js. There's jQuery. Oh, by the way, Backbone is... Um, it prefers you to have jQuery, but it's not a, a hard dependency. The thing is, you have to have something that looks like jQuery. It, it will also run on, on Zepto, which is a kind of a lightweight jQuery for mobile, and on, uh, on the various libraries packaged in Ender.js, which is sort of a package management system. But jQuery is probably going to be your choice in this case. So, required JS is a dependency, of course, and on the spot family, which is a hard dependency. <coughs> and the two remaining files will be twitter.coffee and app.coffee. App.coffee is our main client side application. So far, I've just included dependencies here. Likewise, twitter.coffee. Uh, <coughs> this is um, a convenience class that uh, connects to the server using Socketire and uh, and that uh, kind of re-throws the event it gets from the server, just making a convenient interface for it. I'm going to start by writing that one. This is very easy. First bit here, um, actually, back 
backbone.event is part of the most low level class in backbone, which handles the ability to, to, to uh, throw and listen to events. And normally, I would extend that class, but that turns out not to be possible, so I cheat here and just copy all, all the methods over into my, my new class in the constructor. This is the only place where we have to do that. So, let us start by... Oh, by the way, um, a convention in CoffeeScript is that the at symbol it equals the this keyword in JavaScript. So, when I write at socket, which I'm going to do, I could just as easily write this dot socket, which is what, what it means. So, the, um, the instance uh, field on, on a particular instance of, of the class. So at socket equals io dot connect http oh localized. That connects us to uh, to the the server instead. I should probably start the server, don't you think? Let's see. There is that one. Hopefully we, we are connected to the internet, so we are going to start getting tweets. But enough of that. Let's finish the Twitter class. Uh, we are going to listen to the tweet event I mentioned earlier, and just uh, trigger the event again on our Twitter object on the client side. So we are basically wrapping socket.io. And this is very simple. We get an event <coughs> in. This, by the way, is, is how I define a function in CoffeeScript. I will actually type it out for you, function, but it's not actually possible in CoffeeScript. So, yeah, let me give you an example. Let's not just finish what I'm doing. So, this dot on. No, sorry, this dot. Uh, here we go. And the event. This just retriggers the event. In JavaScript, it would look like this, just so <coughs> there's no confusion. Kind of like this. <laughs> you get the idea. Okay. Likewise, I'm going to. Oh, that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm running this on, on um, a virtual box uh, VM on Windows, so there are some strange uh, hotkeys I'm not aware of. <laughs> so I'm just having a couple of men in uh, Let's see, and we have the delete event, which we also just re re trigger. There we go, that's our Twitter box. And now we're going to have to try and do something about it. Uh, First of all, I mentioned uh, Backbone is a modern view framework. So we should probably start by creating a model. And that is very easy. We're going to create a model for each tweet. So we're going to call the class tweet. And we are going to extend backbone.model. So far, so good. And actually, this is all you need to do to create a model class. Um, just for fun, I'm going to show you um, one of the ways we can extend the model class by including a validator, because a validator function, when, when you try to create it, um, the validator will be called it, and it's able to throw an exception pretty much, telling you that something in the, the data set you're trying to construct is wrong. And of course, everybody knows that tweets can be how long? Thank you. Close enough. Anyway, so uh, the validate function gets an attribute map as a parameter, and um, if thing is, this is supposed to return uh, nothing if everything's okay. <coughs> Otherwise, we, we, we return a string describing what's wrong. 
cell actress dot text dot length bigger than one forty. Then we return three, two, one. And that's it. Now let's just um, instantiate that Twitter object. Twitter is new to that. And then add a listener. On tweet, tweet as a parameter, we get the, the, the whole JSON object straight from, from the Twitter API here. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of information in this. We're basically only interested in the name of the user and the actual text. So I will show you the tweet object, I think. So uh, whenever a new tweet arrives, this function is going to be called with a tweet. So the first thing we do, of course, is we create a new tweet model using that tweet. And the constructor for the tweet model is going to uh, take one object which contains the data fields. So we're just going to pass it the tweet directly and use the same fields as Twitter uses. And then just log it for now just to check that it works. Like that. Right. Uh, there we go. So hopefully we have something running here now. <coughs> Socket next space has no method trigger. Awesome. This is new. Really? Can you see something wrong? Okay. I'm going to have to look at my notes. Because I could have sworn it was <laughs> easy enough to have an it. And in fact, that is completely correct. So, at this point, I am getting worried. <laughs> I have no idea what one from. Uh, actually, why don't we look at the um, list of trigger tweets? Why is that wrong? Don't you need to specify the port or something? Sorry? <laughs> Don't you need to specify the port on your IO Connect? You said just uh, HTTP or dot slash slash. Yeah, uh, this used to work. I don't think that's the problem, but we can try that. <laughs> Did it one by your neighbor who found it. Still wrong. <laughs> Interesting, though. <know, laughs> it happens 20 times, so evidently we're doing something right. Can you go back to the code? Yeah, just a minute. Um, yeah, I can't make sense of that. Here's a go. Uh, maybe you need to use a fat error? Oh, yes, of course. <coughs> I'm so stupid. That's the problem. The thing is, of course, that JavaScript is really stupid about the, the current scope. But this variable. Um, basically, every time you use this variable in, in a method in your class, you should make sure it's bound to your class specifically. Or it can become anything. And in this case, God knows what, what it wants. But using a fat arrow in CoffeeScript is a really fast way of binding it. So that was the problem, of course. Just remind me, whenever I, I actually define a function using a regular arrow, please tell me I'm wrong. Except in the case of the constructor. And this, and yeah. Thank you. So that should work now. And it does. I don't expect you, you'll be able to read this, perhaps on the front row, if we're lucky. But uh, our console has now loaded, makes it for a few minutes we have. Our console has loaded a lot of tweets. This is uh, uh, an instance of the tweet class. If we look at it, we'll see it has an attributes object, which contains something that looks a lot like my latest tweet, in fact. Here's the text, here's the user object, and there's my name, so that looks right. Okay. 
So at least we, we not, now know the soccer tire works. Uh, 25 seconds. Type a bit faster. Um, but uh, we're not really interested in, in all these uh, all these modern objects just, just being logged to the concern. We have to do something to them. And there's another class in Backbone called a collection, which is basically just a list of models, which you can also listen to and react to. When when a model is added to the collection or removed to the collection your views can automatically update. So, this is equally simple. Class tweets extends backbone dot connection. And in this case, we have to specify which model the collection can contain. And that is tweet. And we are going to add a comparator function, which is just telling um, the collection how we want our tweets sorted. And as it so happens, um, each tweet uh, object from the Twitter API comes with an ID, which is just a number. And the number happens to increase uh, over time. So if, if we sort on that number, we're going to have the tweet sorted the right way, chronologically. So, another function. Uh, it takes a tweet. This is going to be the attributes. And so we just return uh, tweets.id. Or we would, because this would just sort it. So, the latest tweet is at the bottom. We wanted that, but at the top. So, we negate that. Uh, the way this comparator function works is a bit unusual because normally you get two objects and you're supposed to compare them and return like this object is smaller or bigger than, than the other. Um, and underscore in this case, uh, you sort by just creating a number from whatever is passed in and it's sourced it just sequentially on the numbers. So this is what we have to do to, to define our sort of. And that concludes the collection. That's really all there is to it. Of course, instead of logging this, we will want to add the tweet to our collection. Just we have to instantiate that. Actually, let's go window the tweet so we can look at it in, in the console. Equals tweets equals new tweets. And I we don't have to actually. Oh no, that's not. We don't need parameters here because we're going to start with an empty list of moments. So, let's see what happens. Apparently, nothing, but we should have a tweets object now. Which contains a list of 20 models, and that looks very promising. And the models are the, the tweets. Let's just double check that the first one is the same as <coughs> the last time. Where's the attributes? Yeah, it's the same tweet. So we have the sort order right. Okay. But I mean, this is all very exciting for, for the back-end guys, but uh, perhaps we should, we should actually put something up on, on the right page. How about that? So, now we are going to... Can you guess? Instance backbone.view, we are going to create as a view. And the view is um, going to require a bit more code. Um, basically, the view is uh, kind of a wrapper for an HTML element. And in this case, we just want to create a new element and populate them with, with the, uh, the actual tweet. And we can do that by saying tag name dot li, which is a list item, which is what I want to, to wrap. And that calls us back to just automatically create the item for us. Okay. Um,
and we need an initialized function. Uh, this is not the constructor, though it sounds like it. The constructor will, will call this function when it's done. It, generally, you should not be overriding the constructor in, in backbone classes. But instead, you use initialize. That's all right. And we are going to have our model property already set on the object, which is the model that we are wrapping. And so you remember I, I said uh, models will trigger events when something changes. So we want to listen to the change event. And when the change event is triggered, we want to render ourselves. And one more thing, we put ourselves, um, a reference to ourselves in the model. So whether we have a model object or, or a view object, we can get to that just for convenience. It was this. Okay. And that render method is going to have to be implemented. It also takes no parameters. And in this case, we have to put some HTML tags into the elements that has been created. And first of all, model dot to JSON. This is uh, the fastest way of just fetching all all the attributes stored in the model. It doesn't create a JSON a JSON string. It creates an object, which happens to be very serializable as a JSON string. And at this point, we should we have another property on our view now, which is called. Um, EL for element. And also, in fact, uh, Backend has already wrapped this for us as a jQuery object, <coughs> which is called dollar $EL. So, uh, this object we can actually just call jQuery on. And we are going to render a template. And here it gets kind of strange because, um, well, I'm just going to have to show you. But let's assume we have a function called template, which takes the tweet and renders that as HTML. Now we're going to create that function. And we're going to use that by using... This is the point where you would plug in your favorite templating library. But we're just going to use underscore, which happens to have a very simple one included. Which kind of looks like the own list kinds of JSP, except it, it takes JavaScript. That's underscore dot template. And here it gets really strange because at this point we are going to use jQuery to fetch the template from our HTML file and get the HTML out of that. Go to the HTML file and here we. Actually, this is ugly, nasty, and I, I'm, I'm really comfortable doing this. But this is how the actually the examples in uh, in the background of the documentation business. So I'm going to have to try and live with this, live with myself afterwards. We just use a script tag with a type that is something that doesn't really exist, like under score dot template. So so the browser doesn't try and run this as script and our ID so we can find it three Python template. And we just put our, our HTML in here. First of all, our image class profile source this <coughs> and here we are start picking things out of the template. The, uh, the context of this template is going to be the, the object that we pass to the template constructor. Uh, sorry, to, to the template function. So this is going to be our tweet, and we can just access properties on it directly. Uh, like this. So this is how you just insert a variable. And it's called user dot. <coughs> remember this. Maybe we can just look it up. 
because we have a tweet. We have a user object. And we are looking for the URL for the image. It's called profile image URL. Right? User profile image URL. This should insert the picture of the person who's tweeting. <coughs> and we do a span class user. And insert user dot <coughs> That's going to be the user that we just tweeted. Span class tweet. Uh, I of course created the CSS for this already, so I'm just reusing the classes I, I used last time when I created the CSS. And this is just text. The text property on the object is going to be the tweet itself. And that should do it. So Backbone is now going to insert these three tags into the, the list item tag that we created by magic. So let's see what happens now. Just, you know, checking there's the syntax error. We are still not actually putting something on screen. <coughs> let's try and do that. <coughs> let's try and do that in, in, in the stupidest way possible. Because uh, just ignoring the tweets uh, collection for now. Whenever there's a new tweet, we create a view. New tweet item and the view constructor takes an object as a parameter where we specify the model that we are going to wrap in this view. And then quite simply, just stupidly, oh uh, yeah, wait a minute. Suppose we just make a div to contain our tweets. Div class, so id Tweets, nothing fancier than that. Oh, and while we're at it, I mean, I, I, we want to tweet at this point. Uh, we want to use this to actually make tweets, not just new tweets. So let's just add an input box for now. Type, text, very simply. And we need an ID so we can find it. <coughs> Three. Okay. Now, tweets, dots, append. This won't work because we have to render it first manually. This should work, should work. We should now get them probably in reverse order, but we don't actually see tweets on the screen now if this works out. We are still not using the collection, so this is not the right way to do it. It's just a way to check that something is happening. Wow! Actually, it's even in the right order. That was completely by chance. And I followed a couple of I suppose you could call them. Yeah, that's Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it tweets a lot. It's very useful as an example of following. Yeah. Great. So we have actual tweets on screen now, but we should actually we should definitely be using that collection. So let's see if we, we can do this properly. Because in fact, we just stitch this and and this line here, tweet stopped and uh, the model should actually render it for us automatically. That's kind of the point of backup. So let's take a if we can do that. The way we want to do this is to create another view, which is kind of the view for the, the collection with, to, into which we add our um, tweet views. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to show you something first. We still have that in our uh, undo button. Yeah. Because we have tweets on screen now, and this is MSC. So if we change a property on one of our model objects, one of our, our tweets, we should see that change in real time on the screen, because these are actual uh, backend views. <coughs> Let's try that. I'm going to go with tweets first, and that's Robert Scoble of all people. Um, Let's see if we, we can change what he said in, in our uh, Twitter view. So a tweet stop first should give us a tweet model and we call this, you probably can't read this at all. So I'm just going to read what I'm typing. Tweets dot first dot set. That gets the first tweet in the tweet collection 
and set is the function we have to call to set a property value, and get will be what we have, get or to JSON will be how we get uh, properties out. So text is the content, and let's try some text. And that works magically. This is why we use these MSC frameworks. But this is just a stupid example. Let's do some real code. I was talking about creating a class called Tweet View, which <coughs> is an other view. So like this. In this case, we are not going to create a new element. We are going to reuse that tweet something that we're creating. So we don't specify a tag. We just leap straight to the initialize method. And in this case, uh, we assume that we have a collection set instead of the model already, so we can access collection. And we will again want to listen to events on this. Uh, in the case of a collection, we get two events that are interesting. We get add and remove, which do exactly what we think they do. And, time, 20 minutes, this is going to be, I think we're just going to make it. I can actually do this uh, on my own when I'm not talking in 10 minutes. So, this is proof that I talk too much. Anyway, we call the add tweet method when the admin arrives. And likewise, for the remove event, we call remove tweet. And that should be it. We just have to implement this. To remove tweet is very simple, so I'm just going to start there. We get a model. And when we get that model, we just simply... You remember we, we stored the, the view inside the model. This is where this comes in handy. Because then we can just put tweet.view.remove. And remove is a method on, on the view class which just removes itself from the DOM, so it disappears from the web page. It's already been removed from, from the collection. And tweet is a bit more finicky. Once again, we get uh, a, a model object. We also get the collection. And we get an options object, which contains a couple of parameters that could be useful. We don't need a collection in this case, but... Okay. First of all, this is a model, so we have to start by creating a view. Create item with our tweets. Oh, sorry. Model tweet, much better. Right. And as the last time, we have to render that. And now, where do we insert this tweet? This is the fiddly part, because um, it could be, I mean, we just get tweets from the server, we don't necessarily get them in, in the right order. So we have to make sure we insert it at the right place in the DOM. So fortunately, this options uh, object that we get as a parameter, it contains a field called index, which is where it was inserted in the collection. And remember, the collection is properly sorted, so we should be able to use that. So we, we, we find the, the elements in the tweet stem that we want to insert ourselves before. We call it before. And, I'm oh, sorry, dot, uh, this dot dollar L in this case is of course the, the tweet stem. We get its children, this is jQuery by the way, and this should be indexable, so if we go options dot index, index, right, this should be either nothing, or the, the tweet that we should be <coughs> inserting ourselves before. If it's not nothing, using the CoffeeScript identity operator, just because I like it, 
we could probably get away with just um, checking if it's true fate, but true fate can be a strange thing in JavaScript, so just go in. This basically just compares it to checks if it's uh, null or undefined and nothing else. <laughs> and if it is defined, we are just simply going to insert ourselves before, before it. You know that. Simple as that. Uh, otherwise, we get our div and that probably means it's empty. So we just append ourselves. This should now be complete as far as viewing goes. Let us try. Ooh, push on the file. I didn't use push, did I? Interesting. The compiler complaint. Do we have a syntax error? Yes, we do. Just, I have no idea what this means. Interesting. I'm <coughs> so quickly going to comment on some components that won't This works. Debugging the hard way, this is copy script, so the so error messages aren't always good and great. This is where the problem is, interesting. Oh, I'm so stupid, sorry. I actually put this dot, and no tweet, and no tweet, I'm defining uh, methods. Sorry. This should now be live. So, uh, let us test this, if some of you are connected and on Twitter. Do you mind tweeting something to this account? Hello Backbone. And let's see if that works. I'm going to try as well. Let's see. Oops, hello. Backbone. Go to typo. That's going to work. Mm. Probably not. <laughs> I have no idea how much lag we're experiencing. Oh! Interesting. It's getting appended at the end. <laughs> this certainly works. I just don't know why it gets sorted at the bottom. It's interesting. But it works great. So we are live and streaming from the Twitch right now. <laughs> it actually seems that. Uh, no, I don't want to see my own tweets. <laughs> But it kind of looks like uh, the people we are following are being sorted on top of the people who uh, we are not following, but just appearing in our Twitter stream because it's, they're talking to us. But hey, close enough, right? <laughs> yes. I actually have the, the, the sort order wrong. Interestingly. Okay. Interesting. Kind of looks like it's not being sorted. Oh, well, I blame Twitter. Right, and I promised you we were going to be able to tweet back. So, just at the end, we are nearing the end of our time, so I should hurry this up. Just at the, at the end, we are going to uh, see if we can produce a tweet. And you remember our Twitter object isn't capable of that right now. Let's just add a tweet method, which takes some text. And what well, is the syntax for that in in, in uh, It's interesting. We have tons of different syntaxes for how you you throw and listen to events. But I think in the case of uh, Socket.io, it's unlike in Backbone for listening, and it's emit for throwing. If, if we throw a tweet event with some text back to the server, the server should then tweet back for us. 
course, we need an interface to do this. And you remember we created that uh, text point at the bottom. You can see it. So, another view. Tweet entry. Extends backbone.view. And I'm going to use another feature on, on the backbone use case, which is automatic binding of, of browser events. We just create an event property on each instance, which takes a string, which is the, the browser event we want to listen to, and potentially also a sub element, but in this case we only have the input element. I know why it wasn't sorted about that. We weren't actually using the collection. We were using the demo code. So interestingly, now if we go in, the, uh, sorry, if we create that collection properly, new tweet. I'm um, sorry, the, the view like this, and I also have to show you, of course, how to specify which element is binds to. You remember that. In this case, the element is the uh, list item created in the tweet item. In the tweet, tweet we did, we expected it to be uh, the tweets div. And we have to specify that explicitly. We just go L equals and use jQuery to find it. And that should be it, right? Sorry? Okay. And we have to specify which collection we're wrapping, which of course is sweet, which I should probably move on top of that. Like this. Okay, I think we're going to run this with our tweets and press, and yes, I think that's going to work. CoffeeScript, a uh, significant annotation sometimes. Interesting things happen. Tweet is not defined. So, tweet? Yeah. Okay. I can see absolutely tweet nothing. Tweet for the ID. Tweet for the ID. <laughs> right. I'm so glad I had you guys. There! And now you can see it sorted properly. We have your tweets on top. Lots of tweets. And interestingly, I tweeted as well and I can't see mine. So evidently I, <laughs> I couldn't even do that right. Okay. We better hurry up and get that, that in tweeting properly. So we want to listen to the key down event. Because uh, when we press enter, we want to fire the tweet. And we have to specify our handler method as a string, which is going to be called the view map. And creating that, <coughs> we're going to get a, a typical dumb keyboard event at this point. And the keyboard event will contain a key code property. And if that is 13, for those who you know your ASCII, that is the ASCII for live feed, or is it character return? It's character return. Yeah. That's what, what you get as an event uh, when you press enter. So if that happens, um, we get our element, which is going to be an input box, and we get the contents of it, store it in a variable tweet. And we uh, remove the contents of the input box, so when we press enter, the text disappears, right? And then finally, we send that to the server, the text. Right, that shouldn't be everything. We should now have a complete Twitter client, unless there are bugs, which I can kind of expect there will be. <laughs> but let's give it a try. 
and my parents like to do that with anything. Okay. The moment of truth. Yeah, for Santa, nothing happens. Why? Because I haven't instantiated the view. Of course, we have to create <coughs> our tweet and preview. Sorry, I keep forgetting to scroll this to the top. And that should be as simple as specifying which element we want to bind into, which we call an tree. This shall work. doesn't appear now, so the validation works, but I know that it was reported on. Because I'm not catching that exception. I didn't see one in, in the log banner. But at least the model was not created. Or possibly Twitter just silently did not accept the tweets. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully that was the validator working. Let's assume that. Okay, uh, questions? We have a couple minutes. It's still worse than a week, it's a legendary for being a Oh, that's <laughs> How do we write a unit test with backbone? Uh, can we use backbone with uh, moot tools? With moot tools? Uh, no, moot tools has its own syntax. So, I mean, yes, you can use backbone with, with Mutus, but um, you might have to use jQuery as well. <laughs> or something like that, that kind of looks like jQuery. Actually, uh, if you stay, stay clear of uh, the, the jQuery uh, features that backbone provides, you should probably be able to use it with anything. But you don't get that dollar element, of course. You have to do a bit more yourself. But in theory, you should, you should be able to use this with any of the two kits. That isn't too interesting. And I should I try and answer this question. Uh, you, you write unit as nice as you would write unit tests and as well. Uh, especially the model class is, is very basic. So it should be very easy to test. Uh, of course, I suppose this is already tested. The, the mechanisms of throwing uh, throwing events and things like that. So, I mean, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but I'm not sure you need to write a measure. <laughs> Just for your, your, your application object, not for, not for the backbone models, because that's very really simple. And you should assume that the language does what it's supposed to. Okay, any more? Thank you. 